Welcome back Shipmate Squad. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to design a master case. Whether you're importing or you're making something domestically or you're just repacking something and mailing it to a 3PL or a distributor, it's important to know how to set up your master case so all the necessary information is there and visible. So guys, what we're starting with here is one of our cases. This is a case that some lighting came in that we had imported for our warehouse. And I wanted to show you some things on this box that I think are very important when you're designing a master case. One of the first things I want you to notice is the name of the business and the logo is present on this box. So for example, you'll see our Viasonic logo here and down in one of the corners, You'll also see the full name of the business as well as the address of that business. And this is important especially for customs or knowing who the package came from, who it's associated with, what business it's associated with. And this is just a really important thing to have on your packaging. Another thing that's really important is the SKU, the stock keeping unit. This is the number or series of numbers and letters that help you identify a unit for keeping stock. So, for example, you'll see here that this item is item number 77200, and this is the number in which we identify it in our system, so we're able to track how much of this unit we have. A lot of people use different formats for their SKUs, but this gives you an idea of you know, what it is and why it's important. The next thing that's important to keep in mind is that you want to have a description of what is in the box. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, but it's very important to know what is in the box that you're receiving. So in this case, this is a ceiling light. So on this box, it says that it's a Viasonic brand, 150 watt UFO light. So it tells me exactly what it is, and I know everything I need to know about this product. This is a great place to also put in any colors, any sizes, any other identifying information that is important to your product. The next thing I want to point out is right below that description, we put the case quantity, the case pack. This is really important because it shows you how many saleable units are inside this box. So in this case, it's just the one pack, but sometimes you can have 12 units, you can have 24 units, you can have 144, you can have a lot of different units in a box and it's really important to denotate that so the person receiving it knows what they're getting. The next thing I want to point out is super important. If you notice on this box there is a barcode. This barcode is a case barcode. It's specific to the case and this helps when we scan the box in the inventory that we know that we have the right box. That we know that we have the right thing and it's going in the right place. So this barcode is really important when somebody is keeping track of your inventory, whether it's you, a 3PL, Amazon, Walmart, anybody who you're sending this product to. So it's really important to have a case specific barcode on the outside. So that way it's easy to track this. What I recommend is that you use either a G1014 or a code 39 barcode. If you don't know what these are, you can look them up or I'll put a uh, link to them in the description of the video so you can check them out and uh, see what I mean. The last thing that I really think you need to have on a master case as a bare minimum requirement is the country of origin. This is really important if your box is going to have to go through customs somewhere. For example, this product originates in China and it's denoted on the box. Now guys, I want to go over some things that I recommend. I strongly recommend you put them on your cases, but if you don't, you're probably going to be able to get by. But this extra information is going to help make sure that you're clear of what's in the box, how much it weighs, you know, any information that's really important to keeping track of this unit. The first thing that I'm going to recommend is that if you have a lot or serial number, for example, this is really common with things that expire or have an expiration date or that you want to sell the oldest units first of, it's really important to have this lot or serial number 
on the box. Next thing I want to point out is on this particular box, we also list the website of our import division. The website is not super important, but it is something that can add a lot of information, especially if you have some specs on your website or other important information related to the product that can really help out somebody who is receiving this. The next thing I want to point out is if you turn the box, you'll see we also have more information listed. On this side of the box, you're going to see the case weight, the case dimensions, the case volume, all the specs that are really important to keeping track of how much this product weighs, how much of it can go on a pallet, what the volume of the item is when it goes onto a pallet so you can estimate it in shipping. It really helps when you're building out an order in the future to have this information at your disposal and a box is a great place to keep that information. The next thing I'd like to point out is the PO number. If you're keeping track of your orders based on PO numbers, which you should be, it's important to put them on the box. So that way you know what order this particular item is associated. So this item has a PO number, and if you look that PO number up in our system, we'll be able to tell what order this was on, where we placed it, how much we paid, a lot of other additional information that might be attached to that PO that if we need it, we can go look it up and we know immediately, just by looking at the box, what PO this item was on. Finally, the last thing I would recommend putting on here is any information that's specific to your company or your industry that you think adds value. So guys, I'm gonna give you another look at our case design so you can get an idea of you know, what a proper case looks like. So for a second, I'll show you the front and then here's the side. So this case here has duplicate front and back and duplicate sides. So I don't need to show you those sides, but take a second. It's a really good example, and I highly recommend referencing it when you're designing a case of your own. It doesn't have to be exactly this format. You can do whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I think it's a good example, and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys today. So just for fun, we're going to take the last couple minutes of this video and look at some examples of some bad cases that I've received over the last couple weeks. Um, and uh, I covered up the business names, so that way there's some discretion there. But, you know, it's always fun to look at some examples of what not to do. So first up on what not to do is the home mater. So every now and then we get a new seller that sends us something like this, which is essentially an everyday box with some marker on it and you know usually they're nice enough to put you know some information as to identifying what products in there and the SKU but really there's not enough information here to differentiate it from other hats that we received from this guy so it makes it very difficult to you know keep the inventory apart and check it in. So even if you're handwriting it, try to get as much of what I said written down because it really helps when you're tracking inventory and it really helps when you're checking things in. Next up is some uh, poly mailers I received. So, you know, we buy a lot of different shipping supplies from a lot of different suppliers. This just happens to be one of them. And if you notice, there's a good description on here, actually a great description, and they have a barcode but the barcode's an Amazon barcode. So, you know, not only are they not following the format that I suggested, but there's no information on here that helps me know anything other than that this is some poly mailers, and I don't know who they're from, really. The name of the company's on here, but there's no address, there's no website. Um, you know, we're, we're missing a SKU number. So, you know, I can't even track it using their SKU in my system. It makes it really hard to, you know, just get any information from this packaging. I don't even know how much it weighs or what the dimensions are without setting it on a scale or pulling out a ruler. So, you know, it, it's a very basic design. It doesn't really cover all the bases. And I think, you know, something to keep in mind is to, you know, make sure you have all the necessary information. Finally, the last one is somebody who thought they could uh, bypass the work by uh, putting all their information on a sticker. 
not only does not all the information sit on this, fit on this sticker, but as you can see, there's a little bit of damage on the sticker, you know, a little bit of rub off. So, you know, stickers not only can't really fit the right amount of information, but a lot of times they can rub off, they can smudge, they can peel up. So, a lot of times I recommend avoiding the sticker option if you can. Now I know sometimes it's unavoidable, but, you know, try to do better than this. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a really fun and informative topic this week. If you guys need any help with formatting a master case, please just leave some comments down below and I'll be more than happy to get to them. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We're coming at you every week with more content. And you know, if there's anything you guys want us to cover, feel free to leave it in the comments or email us. We're always happy to do uh, suggested topics. Thank you guys and we'll see you next week.